it had bipartisan support. I'm yeah. not sure, but I think so. Yeah, she had I think three or four women. I think some Republicans, some Democrat that were that were all in support of the bill. Yeah. Well, I played uh, that Franklin Roosevelt quote about uh, the day will live in infamy, and uh, Tuesday was D Day, the anniversary of the yeah. big invasion of of the coast of France to try to work its way into Germany, which it did. It worked. Great sacrifice by many. And so we just want to say, you know, thank you to all the vets and for all the brave men and women that keep us safe almost every day. I'm sure some days they slack off. I don't know. I just think like, ah, I'm not going to, I'm not going to protect America today. I just I, don't feel like it. I've seen the videos. Oh, I'm just going <laughs> to lay back, stay in my bunk. Well, the one you see a lot is the Marines. Mm-hmm. I don't know how true it is. I'm sure it happens, but I don't know if it's really like a, a, a slack off day. But it, the Marines having fun, they're usually just beating the crap out of each other. Yeah. Let's so, play rugby or something. Yeah. You no know. wrestling. Yeah. This is a video I've seen. We don't get enough fighting day to day, so we're going <laughs> to <gonna> fight <laughs> in the barracks. We can go and talk a little bit about Trump now, right? This is the one I want to talk about briefly. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, except I want to go into great uh, detail. I do want to explain in great detail what epigenetics are, and I'm going to go into DNA mm. and genes and splicing and, and heredity. So <laughs> if you want to just tune out, you can. There's no reason for that, and I posted this as just like a quick flyby story. That so anyway, the history of genetics guy. goes back to, <laughs> to a, a stormy night back in Greece. And Where... 5,000 where, where, B.C. Where Gene Eddix was working <laughs> in his shop. <laughs> yeah. And he had, a, he had like a, this corkscrew device that looked like a helix. <laughs> but and except went, <laughs> helix shape wasn't invented yet. No. <laughs> it's a screw. So, so uh, no, look, okay, so there's this biology professor, ah, which is it's questionable whether yeah. he's a biology professor That's or not. That's what the headline but, said. Um, He's a paleontologist. He's kind, of, he's kind of so he's a geologist, which means he doesn't know anything about science. And he studies he, a lot of you know fossils. He's kind of a crazy dude, conspiracy theory, yeah, but extinction. He said the world's that gonna end. he said that it, in, and I think there is some truth to this. But large traumas, traumatic events, a lot of stress, those sorts of things can actually alter human genetics and change right. genes for future generations. Well, he said anytime there's sure anytime there's trauma like a war or combat can do it or you know well and it could be physical bad things physical starvation. trauma those sorts of things i mean for example donald trump the stress that donald trump is causing on this nation is going to have a a long lasting effect on the genetics of the human of of, of humans forever well just, donald and, trump and this changing, biology, peter peter changing Peter genetics. Ward's the guy's name, and he wrote a book, too, saying that humans are evolving to destroy the earth or themselves in the process. That is a natural, he feels, going to be a natural process that we're just going to evolve ourselves to death genetically. Now, that's pretty yeah, safe because the average lifetime of a species is like 2 million years, and... We've been around for several hundred thousand well, as well, a species. Sh- sure, sure, sure. But so at some point, humans will be extinct. Yeah, but I don't know that a lot of them killed themselves off. Some of them might have. Well, just the ones that were depressed. <laughs> very, very depressed. The dinosaur, mm. like the the platosaurus. But we killed last mammoth. Mm. We're really <laughs> sad now. <laughs> oh, look at Thug. He never leave cave. He just lie there. But I mean, come on, thug, get out. Mm, leave me alone. Yeah, never mind. <laughs> and he just jumps into the hole that's in the cave in the back. <laughs> anyways, um, yeah. He's he, anyways. He's not, he's yeah. Okay. No, look. I, I guess what I'm saying is I'm I'm cool so with this. epigenetics is a real I'm cool thing, but... with the scientist scientific hypothesis. But this guy's speaking on a panel or doing an interview or whatever it is. And he says that Trump, Trump is causing. I mean, come on. If you're going to do science, do science. Let's do politics separate. That's why I put it on there. I thought it was. I thought it was interesting that he's so anti-Trump. He, he is, and he, he thinks he, it will he, alter genetics forever. I think he's anti-human as well. Mm-hmm. He's like, 
those people that say, oh, I wish all the humans were dead, you know, the earth would be a better place. And I always ask them, well, why don't you start with you? Yeah. And what, do you what do you mean? Here's my gun. Blow your brains out. Save the planet. That's how you got those bullet wounds. They don't want to do that. But on the good side, Trump, uh, and this isn't his idea, because I've heard other people mention this as a possibility, but I guess he officially reported it on Tuesday. What? Oh, we're Put, moving on? We're not actually talking about epigenetics? I'm not going to go into that because you don't want to. No, I don't, and neither do any of the listeners. I know. Other than the guy that said it is not a geneticist, and uh, he's a paleontologist. Bill Nye the Science Guy is not a scientist, but we listen to him. No, we don't. Well, I do. Trump has a bright idea. Ah, I get, get that? it. It was funny. I get it because you can run a fan with it. You could. That's why it's bright. Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> no, I'm... Okay, what's his bright idea? He wants to put solar panels on the wall that he builds between Mexico and the U.S., and that would help offset some of the cost. Yeah. So I guess what you guys do is you've got to raise a lot of money, and you've got to put up like 500 feet of, of wall with solar panels on it. Sure, sure, and sure. And then you start generating electric power, which you sell either to Mexico or to the United States. And then you have to wait until you get another bunch of money, and then you put up you know, another 500 feet. Put more panels on. You're making more money, and then you, as you make the money, you're building the wall. And it could take a, a thousand years before we get the whole wall done, but it'll be paid for, and we I, get free electricity. I prefer so. Nothing's free. Two things. I prefer that method of paying for it as we have the money. Mm-hmm. If we're going to do it, mm-hmm. I prefer that. Government doesn't work that way. Um, two. We've talked about this before. And you pointed out how remote some of those areas are and how you can put all the solar panels on them you want, but the cost just to tran- you know, to transport the energy to anywhere that makes sense is ridiculous. Three, this was not Donald Trump's idea. Right. Scott Adams, the guy that does Dilbert, he it was his that. idea like two years ago. Yeah. Um, but he, he said, no, Trump didn't copy me. We just have... We just both had the same idea because we're different types of people, man. It, it was just co- convergence. And I'm Scott Adams, who's never worked in an office, but yeah, he did. ridiculously popular. Who, who said that? I did. He worked for several years in an office. He was some kind of advertising graphic, something That's, or other. Yeah. Okay. Are you being facetious? No, 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 I, no. He did work in an office. <clears throat> mm-hmm. He started doing the comics while he was working yeah. in an office. Yeah. Kind of like you. Doing comics? Yes. In an office. I haven't sold any yet. Most of your no, most of your work is <laughs> ridiculously funny. Okay. <clears throat> Are we up on break yet? Dang it. Nope. Why? No, I just we're running out of stuff to talk about. What well no, we got a lot of stuff. What are we talking about? He worked at Crocker National Bank. Oh, I thought he had some for other seven years advertising or something. Oh God, working he worked at a closely bank? with telecommunications engineers, oh. so he was an IT. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. oh. No, maybe he was a teller. This uh, doesn't make any sense. Huh. He entered a management training program after being held at gunpoint twice in four months as a teller. <laughs> they got him the hell out of there. He was a computer programmer, budget analyst, <laughs> he, commercial lender, he was product bad luck manager, supervisor. <laughs> got an MBA in economics Let's from. Get- University of California, Berkeley. Oh, that's not too shabby. So they said, get this guy in the back. So he spent all that money on an MBA to draw. Right. (laughs) Paid off because he makes good money. Yeah, I'm sure it's the MBA that got him there. Well, no, people change careers, Nate. Right. Sure they do. Wow. It's like a guy can't even, it's not even free to change uh, his I profession. Never, I never said that at all. I, You're he, down he, on people that he, do that. He probably I just could've, can't believe it. He probably could have saved 5 or $6 by not getting the MBA. How do you know that? How do you know that the job he had wasn't uh, influenced and helped along by his MBA? And that he was... It was did it so, the computer so, programming job or yeah, which whatever. one are you talking whatever about? Whatever job he had <laughs> okay. might have got him in the door with the MBA, Maybe. and he was making good money then. It's and possible. 
It wasn't okay. totally wasted. Yeah, good. In two more years, they'll have it paid off. Yeah. <laughs> good. <laughs> Isn't that nice? All right. Uh, the big news today and yesterday, or what? It, was it today, wasn't it? Yeah, Testimony? it was today. James Comey. Do you know he's 6'8"? He is. He's, he's very tall. He's a six foot eight. Did he not that small coward of a man? Do I, is what he is. What I want to know is, did he play basketball? And what's the weather like up there? Those are all this. Yeah. You know, bad tall people jokes. Yeah. Can you see my house? <laughs> Can you look in the window on the second floor and see if my wife's cheating on me? So I don't know. I mean, the only thing that came out of it that was relevant, I think, was Marco Rubio's comment. Well, he had a question, I guess, or a comment that was sort of rolled into a question. I can play it if you want. Going back, the three requests were, number one, be loyal. Number two, um... Let the Mike Flynn thing go. He's a good guy. He's been treated unfairly. And number three, can you please tell the American people what these leaders in Congress already know, what you already know, what you've told me three times, that I'm not under pers- personally under investigation? Those are the three things he asked. Yes, sir. You know, this investigation is full of leaks left and right. I mean, we've learned more from the newspapers sometimes than we do from our open hearings, for sure. Um, you ever wonder why, of all the things in this investigation, the only thing that's never been leaked is the fact that the president was not personally under investigation, despite the fact that both Democrats and Republicans and the leadership of Congress knew that and have known that for weeks? I don't know. I find matters that are briefed to the Gang of Eight uh, are pretty tightly held, in my experience. The Gang of Eight. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. I don't remember who they refer to. Michael Rubio and seven other people and Amnesty. Um. Yeah, I don't know. That was funny to me because it's true. It's like all these leaks, and we're investigating all these leaks, but everyone thinks Trump's under investigation, but the one thing that your bureau didn't leak was that he's actually not under investigation. Right. So he confirmed, like, right away, yeah, three separate occasions I told Donald Trump that you are not personally under investigation because you remember Trump said that, right. and everyone's like, oh, yes, you are. Yeah. Uh, and the other, the only other good thing that came out of this was – he started out right away, crybaby victim. Oh, I feel so hurt that I got fired this way. And Trump is a liar. And the White House very, very astutely responded saying, Trump is not a liar. And so it, it settled, I think, that matter. <laughs> <laughs> now we can rest easy. We don't have to alter our genes anymore. We, <laughs> yeah, there's right. no stress. Oh, Trump's not a liar. He's that's not good. a liar. Everything's fine. So if you turn on ABC or CNN or MSNBC, you see the clips of Comey saying Trump was intimidating. Trump was terrible. You turn on Fox News and you hear the clips of Comey saying there is no evidence that Russia had any impact on the election. There's no evidence of any collusion between Trump and the Russians. Michael Flynn is being investigated and charged for a process crime of lying, not for any collusion with the Russians. Uh, but you turn on the liberal channels and it's all the opposite stuff, all the negative. So essentially it's like a half C. Do you know why Comey said all that stuff? Which stuff? Everything he said in the testimony. Because it's true. No, Trump got to him. You think so? Trump got to him. Yeah. Well, he, uh, no, he, I, he offered him. Listen, he said a lot of bad things. About he Trump. offered Comey, Comey all of the Trump steaks that he can <laughs> eat for life. Oh, wow. If, yeah. And, and who wouldn't take that? And some really nice silk ties, Trump ties, made, yeah. made in China. Uh, he, he, he can have all the ties he wants. And full ride to Trump University? Yeah. He, well, he gets to be a professor. <laughs> Ooh. Full tenured professor, no, but, okay, I might So add. this six foot eight man also said that he, Did he was- play basketball? That he was terrified. He was scared. He met yeah. with Trump and yeah. he was scared. So scared. Yeah. And well, um, Maybe because he, he wasn't carrying his gun anymore. Or is I, he a retired law enforcement I, I, officer I, now and does he get to carry it anywhere he wants? I saw a report that said uh, Comey today coming in kind of slumped, like looking weak and uh-huh. saying he's scared and all that. People that know him uh-huh. said that isn't him at all, uh-huh. that it's it's an act. Huh. So I, I don't know if that's true or not, but it's interesting. It's it's definitely interesting. I, I can't be I can't think that he would be intimidated by too much. Exactly. I mean, I could now s- if it was Clinton, <laughs> Hillary. You mean. He's a dead man. Holy cow! 
Well, right. <laughs> yeah. She'll have you killed. Right. Trump will just fire you. Right. <laughs> You're fired. Uh-oh. That's trademarked. <laughs>